Um, so this is a continuation from, well, it's just the next chapter. Last time we did uh, your metabolic type and we got into that chapter. And this one is on overcoming emotional barriers, which is legitimately like my favorite topic on earth anyways. Emotions are not necessarily something that people talk about a lot in terms of the function and the physics of them and the physiology behind them, but they really do on a chemical, cellular level, energetic level, have a tremendous amount to do with every single thing in your reality. Um, and it's not talked about enough. It's starting to get a little bit more mainstream, but this is like a really deep passion of mine. So when I saw this chapter, I was like, oh, this is a good one. Plus, we have all of this knowledge, right? Like we've taught this class, we've taught this class together for, I don't know, like two years now. And you can implement things and you can implement things and kind of like what I said in my reel today, like all of a sudden you just get derailed for some reason and don't understand why or you have resistance towards something or, and then, and or look at the people who have come and they've come for a short amount of time and then they stopped coming altogether. Um, it's because of emotional block blocks. It's really because of emotions and not knowing how to process through them. If you can process through the emotions, then you can get rid of the block and then continue on your merry way. But until you address the emotional stopping points, you can't. What I tried to do in the beginning part of this lecture was merge. So the book is Dr. Mercola's Total Health Program. The chapter is Overcoming Emotional Barriers, barriers Nourishing the Mind and Spirit. I pulled up Pastor Frank's sermons from a year or two ago. One of his favorite sermon topics that he did was when he really did a very good job of breaking down mental strongholds and all of that stuff mm -hmm. and really got into the physiology. Yeah, see, your souls all remember. And I loved it. He did a really great job for it. Hey, there is no separating mental health from physical health. You cannot truly have one without the other. The wonderful thing is that as you improve your physical health, you can improve your mental health and vice versa. We know this because we've extensively talked about the gut, and we know that our gut is in control of our mental health. First thing that you do with somebody who suffers from depression or anxiety or anything like that is adjust their gut microbiome, and you clean up a whole lot. Nope. By addressing your mental health issues and removing the emotional obstacles to cure, you greatly improve your physical health. So this is like the avenue that Pastor Frank was taking in his sermon series about addressing the mental health. You gotta take the old couch out before you can put the new couch in. Makes sense, right? I don't agree with everything on here, but I really appreciate this slide because not this isn't necessarily talked about a lot. We are, we go to church, so we talk about the Holy Spirit a tremendous amount, but like what is the soul? And we in here talk about the body as a holy vessel that carries all of these divine components of humanity. But what is it actually? It's your mind, it's your emotions, and it's your free will. This class is about emotions, so that's why I put that up there. I appreciate it, too, because your spirit is what connects you to God. Your soul is what connects you to other humans down here. It's what you recognize in other people. And then your body is what connects you to the ground. So, may your spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is what the Bible says that a human being is. So, what are emotions? Because they are part of our soul. So if they are a main component of our soul, then we really need to understand it. Just like we really need to understand our physical body to understand how to maintain physical health, these are all connected. You can't have a healthy body without all of these components being addressed. So emotions, if they're under your will and your mind, you gotta have a clean emotional, you gotta have good emotional regulation in order to make in order to mentally be able to make good decisions and then have the will to be able to go through and do them. 
So what are emotions? They come from, the word emotion comes from the Latin word emovie, which actually means energy in motion. When I learned that, like my brain exploded because that's fascinating to me. So what we think of as an emotion of as emotion is an experience of energy moving through our body. This generally feels like sensations of contraction, tension, expansion, such as calm. Like, I'll give you an example. All you need to understand is that emotions are energy in motion. That's it. So getting to the topic, an emotional barrier. What is an emotional barrier? It's a mental block that influences how you perceive yourself and others' actions. That's big. It prevents you from clearly communicating your feelings. And it's also a trigger that, it's a trigger, it triggers an emotional response that is inappropriate or unproductive. <laughs> right? Because yeah. if you have an emotional block somewhere and you get triggered from outside, which we all do, you've seen those people that just erupt in anger. That is caused by an emotional block somewhere. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I didn't exactly. say a word. <laughs> no, you didn't have to. It prevents you from clearly communicating your feelings. Feelings are... Uh, you know what? I don't even want to get into that. Um, and a mental block influences how you perceive yourself and others' actions because... If you, going back to what your soul is made up of, if you have an emotional block somewhere, you can't mentally hold a clear picture of what reality is of yourself or other people. So that's really important. So the basic objectives of this is to give you some tools on how to remove emotional blocks by addressing the mind, body, and spirit. So I started writing all of this out, and I'm like hearing stronghold, stronghold. I'm thinking of Nancy. Nancy, you were in my head with this word. I was like, okay, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. Um, so I dove into that a little bit. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments with every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. This last sentence is so functional, especially when it comes to making healthy life choices. And I'll show you an example of that in a second. This was nice. Google said this. I said, what is a stronghold? It said, harmful thought patterns, arrogant attitudes, or messages from the outside world that have left, left a lasting impression on the Christian's mind and heart. Over time, these beliefs can become strongholds. And in the spiritual, uh, strongholds in the spiritual realm that people need to destroy using the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. See it, say it, do it. Those are Pastor Frank's tools that he gave us in that sermon way back when. Specifically this. He called them God's weapons. It was the see it weapon, which is meditation. The say it weapon, which is confession, and the do it weapon, which is action. And this is the scripture that he took that from. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. So if a patient with arthritis has high anxiety, following a perfect diet may not help the person with their arthritis if they don't address their underlying anxiety because there is no separation from the body, the soul, and the spirit. So... I want you guys to just sit for, now it might be a little bit different in this class because we've already, we've done so much work, but I'm going to read something to you right now and I want you to take it like I'm telling you this directly and I want you to feel in your body, these are feelings, feelings are things that you feel, sensations that you feel in your body, like on the food mood poop thing that I gave you guys a couple weeks ago, mood could also be feelings. 
feelings are indicators of underlying emotions. That's what feelings are. And emotions are energy and motion, so they are functional to the human being. It's not something that we should push down. There's you know, healthy ways to express things. But here we go. Are you ready? I want to know if anybody in this room feels anything. You know by removing processed grains and sugars, it is one of the best things for your health. So as of tomorrow, you are not to eat any more English muffins, bagels, French bread, cakes, cupcakes, <laughs> cookies, anything like that. How did it, did anybody feel anything? Sad and deprived. <laughs> Very sad, because that's where, like, that's my go-to. It's like, yes, like, hey, girl, let's curl up with a cookie. Yeah. I would I feel, know. like, <laughs> at one girl. point, <laughs> I could remember it's feeling like, like myself and I, I know, I know. a twinge, like, eh, yeah, like, eh, yeah, it's like, eh, eh. Yeah. I don't like that, eh. I'm gonna miss it. I just made banana bread. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, okay, so we're not gonna eat those anymore. <laughs> Wait, I don't think I can do that. That is an emotional barrier. That tells you that's what that is. The person that I said to come to the class today for some whatever came up for him today was was his programming, was his emotional block. That is not allowing that person to be here. Yeah, um, self-doubt. I don't think I can do that as an example of emotional thinking. It's mm -hmm. self-doubt is lurking inside. It causes physical resistance. And this is where I loved what the word emotion actually means, energy in motion. Because it works your nervous system. And your nervous system is electrical. And Im immediately God was like, well, think about a light switch. Like you go and you turn a light on and you allow the current to flow through and it flows freely and we have light in the room and it's fine. When you turn the light switch off, it's resistance. It's stopping it. Emotions are supposed to flow through your body freely. When I was at my grandfather's funeral, I had to do a reading. And I was doing the reading and I was standing at the pulpit and... Um, all of a sudden, I had to cry because I got to whatever point in the thing and it was really deeply emotional. And I sat there and I stopped and I paused and I allowed my body to feel the feeling and the tears came and I felt this like just charge through my body and I was able to breathe through it and I honored how I was feeling and I didn't stop it. And... It was really super powerful, and then I was able to continue reading, and not only was I able to function with tears crying, but it got everybody, and, and not that that was my intention, but that's what happens, because it's an electrical current. It runs through everybody. It's our souls, and that's how we connect. Souls connect human beings. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Soul ties... It's a real thing. Oh, yeah. So it's energetic. And it's it's energetic. energetic. It is, too. It's like, so when you stop, so when you stop a current from going somewhere, like you said, you can't have any more cookies, this, that, and the other thing. So it's like, okay, but it, to, like, you need a positive to the negative so that they can kind of, like, go to, so, like, so now you have to take that energy and go somewhere else. So you can't have it somewhere. You can't get that energy from some results you need to turn and get it from some does that, am i making sense here yes yeah. but it's a matter of seeing that you're feeling resistance right. you're physically feeling resistance to yeah. what uh, let's say the cookies like you can't have the cookies now all of a sudden i want the cookies i'm feeling resistance because you're telling me i can't have it do something else. it's a matter of acknowledging how you're feeling in the moment the right. way over it is through it so right. you have to sit with it and, and sometimes, it, I mean, this, I've gotten to such a place with this because this is my language, mm -hmm. um, where if something mm -hmm. comes up, I allow myself to feel that way and I talk to God about it. And a lot of the times he'll bring me to the memories of where those things, because a lot of this stuff happens in childhood. Mm -hmm. So, um... Hold on, we'll get there. Even though you know removing refined grains and sugars would greatly improve your health, self-doubt makes you feel like you couldn't possibly succeed. Okay. It's not a lack of willpower if you crave addicted foods. Mm -hmm. There are tools to help you address emotional changes and addictions. Tending to the emotional issues is central to the ultimate growth of health. So tending to those, why, why do I feel resistance right now? Mm -hmm. What do I need? 
because I have everything I need. God gives me, I have everything I need in this moment in time. Why do I feel resistance to that? What part of me feels like it's not getting something? Because that's ultimately what's happening. And I, I personally have conversations with God about it, and that's when he'll kind of show me, okay, this is what happened, and this is you know, what you needed as a child, and you didn't blah, 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 blah. But the point of this class is to give you tools in the moment if you don't have that you know, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. capability. Um, the majority of emotional barriers stem from childhood. We reward kids with junk food and celebrate with them too. Birthday cakes, cupcakes, ice cream, McDonald's, Happy Meals, Halloween, Christmas, Easter, which happens to be cold and flu season. Um, they're indoctrinated by junk food marketing on TV, electronic devices. Remember we talked about surround marketing when we talked about the mm. devils in the food system? It's mm. literally the marketing strategy used by tobacco companies. It's called surround mm. marketing. And they specifically target children so they have customers long term. My favorite fact from that um, was that's the reason why juice boxes are the size or the shape and size that juice boxes are because it creates muscle memory hopefully so that when they hold a cigarette pack in their hand when they're older the dopamine will remind them because everything comes from childhood it will give them the dopamine rush when they're holding it that it did in childhood because it's a really sugary sweet treat and that's what they're programmed to now think that's what surround that is what surround marketing is dopamine it's is the like devil mm. right exactly is like crazy like exactly it's, it's, exactly and yeah satan's definitely got a hold on that in our country mm. because of this like look at all of that we celebrate everything with this stuff so it's uh, it's so ingrained it's so ingrained mm. <clears throat> seeds of self-doubt other emotional blocks that can lead to self-defeating behaviors um, trauma, abuse, low self-esteem, chronic high stress, depression and anxiety, a dysfunctional childhood, mimicking parental behaviors, self-medicating with foods. How many people are like, oh, I had a really bad day, I'm going to go get ice cream? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like, I... <laughs> I talking to me. As soon as I get angry, then I've got to keep Right, <laughs> exactly. So, because you're angry, and you need to feel better. So, instead of... It's like you're in a dark pit. P the same reason why people go to drugs and alcohol. They need to get out of that pit. The way out of that pit is through that feeling. How I it's so through much sugar, sitting there. I would be drunk all the time. Mm -hmm. I would not legally be able to drive my car. Um, the reason why I started drinking so heavily was because I associated having a good time with drinking based on what my, how my parents operated. They were very big entertainers, and my parents are not alcoholics, but that they just always pay, they had a they had beautiful parties, and it was always with alcohol. So I just assumed that it was the alcohol that did it. So me at 21 years old when I moved out, I was like, oh, alcohol all the time. This is fun. Like. And that I got into a huge problems with that. So generational yeah. curses and things like yeah, that yeah, stem yeah. from yeah. this place. Yeah. And it, if it doesn't hit that, it'll hit something else. So yeah. you really have to heal the emotional, yeah. energetic roots. component yeah. roots, the roots. Yeah. And actually, uh, there was a holistic doctor that I went to see. He did acupuncture in me, and he was doing some technique there, which was really interesting. And he found the areas where I was holding my resentment yeah. and your soul and, yeah and my you know my agony and all that stuff and he was able to release it and i tell you after he kind of punched it or you know with the acupuncture i started crying mm -hmm. i had no reason why to cry mm -hmm. and i was just crying 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 but by the time i left i felt like such a huge relief stronghold was broken oh my God. It was like, yeah. oh. don't ever shut down crying yeah. it is literally mm -hmm. the the, the release of the energy, the emotion, energy in motion. Crying is so functional for your body, it's not even funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not even funny. It says in the Lord God that God captures your, your Tears. 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 Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's test that quick. Somebody trip him. No. <laughs> Good Lord. So. The book talks about tapping. Has anybody heard about tapping? Oh, Has anybody done is tapping? Yeah. So Tara's like, huge yeah. on tapping. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yes. So we're going to watch a few little things so y'all can get it. Yeah. So 
we, who was here for Dr. Suger, the acupuncturist? Okay. We're talking about the same science, all right? So Chinese medicine has been around for over 5,000 years, utilizing the energy systems of the body to bring the person back into equilibrium. Acupuncture uses inserting tiny needles superficially into the meridian points that release energetic blocks. Here we go. First one. Inside our brain, we have a part called the amygdala, which is about the size and shape of an almond. This little part of our brain is really important as it allows us to sense threats and sets off our important fight or flight mechanism. Luckily these days, we don't get chased by saber-toothed tigers. Our stresses are more likely to be chronic lower level stresses like work issues, time pressure or family life. While short bursts of amygdala activation help us when we're in real physical danger, our amygdala does not work as well when it's constantly firing. We experience a range of uncomfortable emotions. We can't think as clearly. And as a result, we don't make the best choices. <laughs> Amazingly, the tapping technique has been shown in laboratory brain scans to send a calming signal to the amygdala. And this is why when you tap, you end up feeling calmer. When the fog of amygdala activation lifts, you can also think more clearly and make better choices about everything. Interestingly, the tricky amygdala also plays a central role in our reward and pleasure pathway. It's a vital part of our brain's addiction center. So when you see a chocolate, drive past your favorite takeaway, or it turns wine time, your amygdala lights up. Fortunately, as tapping calms your amygdala, it also powerfully reduces food and drink cravings. This often means you don't end up feeling like eating or drinking those foods and drinks at all after you tap. But the coolest thing is, the tapping actually deactivates the amygdala. So when you are exposed to the cues that would normally excite it, it remains in a calm state. Groundbreaking university trials found tapping for food cravings work better than CBT as the reduction in food cravings lasted longer. In fact, a year following tapping therapy, many people in the trials actually forgot their most craved foods and no longer ate them at all. Through normalizing the activation of the amygdala, tappers feel better make better choices about eating, drinking, and physical activity, and as a result, end up weighing less without any harmful dieting. It's called the emotional freedom technique. Mm -hmm. Tapping on specific acupuncture meridian points while using affirmations is a self, of self-acceptance allowed. That's what it is. Which is, so you're seeing it, you're seeing, I'm having resistance to something right now. I'm feeling resistance inside my body because now that I've used that word and given you that word, I'm assuming that, that you're going to now start seeing that. Like you're going to feel, oh, this is the emotion. It's causing resistance because that's what's happening on an energetic, emotional level is it's, you're blocking, you're blocked. So you're feeling resistance. So when you feel that, it's okay, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to then say it. So back to Pastor Frank's weapon. See it, say it, and then we're going to do it. Let's do it. EFT heals disruptions in the body's energetic and electrical systems. The, your, the, this is, that's your nervous system. That is your nervous system. Your meridians run congruent with your nervous system. So when I say energetic electrical systems, I'm talking about your nervous system. Everything we see, we hear, we feel, we taste, we smell is transmitted to our brain through electrochemical messages in our energy systems. Our energetic electrical system is essential to physical health. Without it, we die. Your heart doesn't beat without energetic. Like, your heart is, that is what your heart is. It is, it is a... It's a generator. It's a generator. It's an electrical generator. It's like that's like the people that AFib, they're 
their electrical system is off, off. Yeah. right? A lot of people come to me and they say tapping is woo -woo. And while I have a lot of compassion for them, I also have some firepower to send back to them. So let's talk about what tapping really is. <laughs> tapping is a blend of modern psychology, Chinese medicine and neuroplasticity. So from the Chinese medicine standpoint, there are these meridians, these energy lines that bring prana or life force into the body. The understanding is that it flushes energy to clear out struggle and trauma and emotional pain. Recently, they did a test to prove that these meridian lines exist. They actually injected a blue dye into the meridian points. And what they saw was that the meridian lines all lit up along those points. There are also these neural clusters from the nervous system that link into the veins and the blood. And they are all clustered around the meridian points. So then when you tap or you put an acupuncture needle on those points, you're also stimulating the nerve endings in those clusters as well. So when trauma happens, not only are you clearing it out of the energetic body, you're actually clearing it out of the stored trauma in the nervous system. So then we jump into neuroplasticity. And that's all about rewiring the brain, choosing new beliefs, and having a new way of seeing reality and creating new habits, right? When you're tapping on a fear, and as you're breathing love into the fear, they show that the pathways that are glued in place, shooting back and forth an emotional reaction or a habit or a perception, they're glued in place. But when you start bringing love, empathy, and forgiveness to it, the protein bonds that are gluing it shut actually melt away and the synapsis opens up so that you can rewire your brain to choose those new beliefs, to have a new experience of reality. So all of this and so much more I could go into, but the truth is the proof is in the pudding. But in order to eat that pudding, you got to be willing to feel your emotions. And so many of us just don't want to go there. We would prefer to defend, to deflect, to make an excuse, and to not. And so what I would always say is if you are ready to get past all the numbing and actually feel for a moment what is going on inside of you and tap, you'll clear it out really quickly. I just think that talking about this stuff, like, without talking about the energetic, comp the emotional energetic component is only a piece. It's why you can't, like, when, when he gave the example of taking, you can't put a new couch in without taking the old couch out. It's like, yes, but you have to loosen the anchor that is stored inside your body in order to be able to take that couch out. You can't just will it out and you can't just like walk it out. Like the, it's, it's hooked there and you have to get to the soul component in order for it to shift inside your body. Um, so EFT uses tapping of your fingers at the end of meridian points. Tune into your emotional problem and repeat the affirmations. Even though I eat junk food to help me cope with stress, here's the say it, I deeply and completely accept myself. Mm. That is it. I think you can say that. <laughs> I have to remember it. It's not even just like, you know, like, yeah. And this to me is just the grace part. It's just the grace part. And it's really tapping and it's getting that grace inside and allowing yourself to release and really let go of whatever the shame is or whatever your body is physically holding on to. It is physically feeling the grace inside your body. Take it from a biblical, take it through a biblical lens. What created creation was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Mm -hmm. So you repeating something with the intention that I am going to connect with this word and use this tool to get through what I'm getting through right now will eventually, by the design of all of us, by the design of creation, by the design of how God designed all of this, that will work. That will work because of what Bible scripture with the 
tongue and you say blah blah? Wait, the life is in the tongue. Oh, yeah, that's in the tongue. And how you speak it, that's... Speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. It will eventually rewire your brain pathways. And if you're tapping uh, and functionally on the emotions in those meridians, like this sheet shows you, and there'll be another slide to really get into that, um, it, it will shift. It's a journey. It's your soul's journey because your emotions are the component of your soul. Mm -hmm. So if you have a conversation with God and say, I want to heal all of these parts of myself that I don't accept, then so be it. That's what will happen. You have to be willing to look at those things. And like she said, or he said, you have to then be willing to sit through the emotions mm -hmm. Because that is the only way through. Whatever you shoved down when you were a child because you weren't, your soul is so intelligent and God designed it so that if you step into a traumatic experience when you're a child and you can't mentally, emotionally understand, regulate, integrate what's happening at that moment, you will be protected from it for a short time. It's, it's a compensatory mechanism, like what we saw with the cyber saber tooth tiger or whatever. It's a strategy. You don't feel the fear in the minute you just run. But you can't not feel that because emotions are energy in motion. They have to be released. They have to stay in motion. And when you shove them down, they'll sit somewhere forever until you feel it. You have to let, you have to release the energy. Like he said, he's, he it poked him and he started crying and crying and crying. He doesn't even know why he was crying. It's because your body physically needs to discharge the electricity. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Um, okay, so EFT stimulates the meridians and heals the negative emotion, blocking the flow within the channel. I mean, you don't even really need to... The only job that you have, I think, is to recognize and witness and see the block. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to do anything. You just have to recognize it and say, okay, I'm going to work on this right now. God, da-da-da-da-da. And we'll, they'll show you what to say. You could probably spin it however you want to through, you know, a biblical lens. <laughs> Right, like this is a process, like going through this is a process, and if this is something that you like, like I like acupuncture, I go to acupuncture, I go to essential oils, I go to other things when I'm working through something emotional, energetic, electrical things. I have my tools, but this is like, I mean, because I understand the meridians, I understand all of that stuff, and it's totally, it's totally functional. So she's going to do a very good job of taking us through how to do this. And she's solution.com. Really cool. This is Jessica Ortner. And welcome to our How to Tap area. Here we'll provide all the information to help you get started right away to use this incredible stress relief technique that will really benefit your mind and your body. Now in this video, I'm going to show you where the tapping points are so you can get a visual. The first point is the side of the hand, and it's the karate chop point. So tap on that fleshy part. The next point is the eye valve point, and it doesn't matter which side of the body you tap on. Just pick a side and tap where the beginning of your eyebrow begins, right on that hair. I hope you're tapping along with me. You're going to follow that bone until you're on the side of the eye, staying on that bone. Ouch. Then underneath <laughs> your eye. <laughs> Again, staying on that bone. I can't see that. <laughs> Underneath the nose. The chin point, which is actually the crease between your lip and your chin. Your collarbone point. I like to just take my whole hand and tap where a man's bow tie would lie and it'll stimulate the point. Then underneath the arm, about a hand width from your armpit. <laughs> then you end with the top of the head. Those are the nine points in this tapping algorithm, and that is one round. So what you do is you begin by saying the setup statement. The setup statement is, even though I have this problem, so even though I have this anxiety, even though I have this headache, mm -hmm. I love and accept myself, or simply, I accept myself. A lot of people feel resistant to this. They say, why would I ever say I accept something that I want to get rid of? 
Well, it's our inability to accept the feeling that usually keeps it stuck in place. By saying the setup statement, it sets us up for the rest of the process, helps neutralize any judgment we have around the problem. So you say the setup statement three times. Then you tap on the rest of the acupressure points while simply saying how you feel. It's not about the fancy language. It's about being honest with how you're feeling, bringing that up in your body, and tapping on that acupressure on these acupressure points. Again, sending that calming signal to the brain, letting your brain know that even with this thought, you are safe and it's okay to relax. So let me give you an example of what one tapping round may look like. If you are stressed around, say, a deadline, you would tap and say, even though I feel so stressed around this deadline, I love and accept myself. Even though I feel stressed around this deadline, I accept myself. Even though I feel stress around this deadline, I love and it's accept kind of myself. Whatever oh, really variation of the set of statement you'd like to use, it's perfect. <laughs> then we're gonna tap on the rest of the points just while we vent. So it would go something like this. The stress around this deadline, side of the eye, I have too much to do. Under the eye, it's too much for one person. Under the nose, all this pressure that I feel, chin, this pressure I feel to do it perfectly. Collarbone, this pressure around this deadline. Under the arm, all this pressure around this deadline. Top of the head, all of this pressure. <laughs> It's as simple as trusting your intuition and really just giving a voice to the tape you're already playing in your head. You might already be having that panicked conversation. Now have that conversation with yourself while stimulating the points to really see a difference. You'll get to the point where you can say these things, you can think these thoughts without having the tension, the physical response. And that is where the real change happens. Well, I hope that is enough to help you get started. Continue reading here to get more information. And welcome to thetappingsolution.com. Uh -oh. She's still talking. Um, yeah, I mean, just like with anything, it's definitely strange at first, especially, I mean, outside of this classroom. But when you have to do it in the moment when you're feeling uncomfortable with something, you mm -hmm. stop and, like, break this down and say, okay, I'm going to deal with this now. Like, it's like starting to run. Like, it's uncomfortable at first until you get in the habit of doing this. And the point here is to allow your soul to expand. And the more, the more you are able to let go of that baggage, the more you're able to, to clear those stuck emotions, the more of you is present. The more human you feel and the more you can connect to this experience because you're not living through the projections of your stuck emotions like how i said in one of the beginning slides like it distorts how you see yourself and people when you have emotional barriers so when you get rid of those emotional barriers you can see reality reality a lot clearer and that is the god's honest truth like for real you can see yourself too yeah you see yourself way you show up. way more yeah way more way more mm -hmm. Um, spiritual health. So mind, body, mind, soul, spirit. That was the algorithm for emotional health. So um, prayer means to petition. Prayer is communication with God. We do this by praising him, confessing our sins before him, thanking him, asking him for our needs and desires. Prayer is communion with our creator. When we pray, we engage in a loving fellowship with the maker of heaven and earth. And it's amazing because he created our bodies to do all of this. So when we connect to that in a prayerful way, it's like, it's, being human is so mind-blowingly beautiful. Like, ah, oh, it's amazing. Uh, meditation, to concentrate or to ponder. Christian meditation is a form of prayer that is focused on quieting the mind in order to focus on God. Christian meditation is based in the belief that God is present in all things and that quieting the mind makes it easier to hear God's voice. That is the truth. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. John 14. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Matthew. Ask it and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Matthew. 
And meditation blesses the one who does not walk in step with the wickedness or stand in the way that sinners take, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but those who delight in the law of the Lord, and those who meditate on his law day and night. Psalms one and two. Thank you. I know that was a little bit of a bumpy lecture, sorry, I have to refine it a little bit. However, that was it.